same person asked a second question. That way we spread the input out as many people as possible. If you want to address it to one of us or the other, please do, or we'll both uh, answer it if possible. And the briefer the question, we'll try and be brief on answers too, so we can get to as many people as possible. Your first one. My name is Gretchen Quarterman. I'm from Lowndes County. And first I'd like to say I really appreciate that you've come this far south into the state. Georgia is, as you know, largest state east of the Mississippi, and it's a big place to get around. So I really appreciate that you've come down here to see us. Um, when I called around today to invite some of my friends to come with me, they all said, well, Gretchen, I can't go to a meeting in the middle of the afternoon. I have to be at work. I'm lucky to have a job. Um, so I would appreciate it if you could maybe schedule some of your meetings in the evenings so that the working class people who have real concerns um, could also talk to you. Um, in terms of how could we save some money, I think that the biggest place that our money goes right now is to the military. And if we would bring our young men and women home from overseas across the globe, not just from the Middle East, but from all around, we would find a lot of money that we could then invest in our infrastructure in, in building up our technical colleges, in, in building roads and bridges in our country, instead of doing that somewhere else. What do you think about that? Well, first of all, I mean, Sachs is on armed services, so I'll let uh, Sachs have a comment too. But let, let me say this everything has to be on the table. You can't selectively reduce spending if you just pick certain areas where you're going to cut and put certain off. So defense needs to be on the table, just like every other function of government. Defense Department, by the way, has more accountability measures and interest spending, like the Base Realignment and Closing Commission, than any other particular agency of government. But everything needs to be on the table, and there are efficiencies and savings. I ran a business for 22 years. There are a lot of things you think you can't do without, but when times are tough, you find out that you can. But there's one thing for sure. There are sons and daughters of people in this room, or relatives and friends of people in this room who are in Afghanistan, Iraq and other places not mentioned that are protecting the security of the United States of America. Whatever we do, we cannot short sight those people in terms of their manpower, their material, their health care, or their services when they come home as veterans. But everything should be on the table so we consider every part of government when we come up with the cuts necessary to balance our budget. Right? And I don't disagree with one thing Johnny said about that because if we're truly going to get back to a balanced budget, as I said earlier, everybody is going to have to pay their fair share, including the Department of Defense. But let me let me just run through a little pie chart here that uh, gives you an idea of where we spend our money today. Because there are a lot of misconceptions out there about the fact that all we got to do is cut discretionary spending, and we can balance our budget, and we can solve this $14 trillion debt. Fourteen percent of our money that's spent in Washington today goes to discretionary spending. 15% of our money goes to the Defense Department. The budget this year for the Defense Department is going to be about $715 billion and some change. $115 billion of that goes to our overseas contingency operations in Afghanistan and Iraq. A little over $600 billion goes to other expenditures in the Department of Defense. We have um, uh, Social Security comprises about 15%. Unfortunately, that comes out of the General Treasury. As all of you know, all of your Social Security money goes into the General Treasury now, and it comes out of that. Medicare is about 10%. Medicaid is about 6%. Uh, entitlements are about 13%. Tax expenditures are about 22%. These are the tax expenditures that I alluded to earlier, and that's both corporate and personal expenditures right there. So do we need to uh, cut defense spending? Look, I, I am a defense hawk. There is nobody in the United States Senate that is more of a defense hawk than I am. But I thoroughly understand that there's a lot of waste, fraud, abuse at the Pentagon. I want to make sure that we give our men and women who are put in harm's way, and we just were reminded again this week of what a dangerous world it is we live in. We lost 30 of our young people this week. And we want to make sure that they have all of the training, all of the weapon systems, and everything else they need to carry out their mission of saving the lives of, of uh, Americans and protecting American assets. But we know that out of that 15%, just like out of this 14%, just like out of the 22%, and everything else in this pie chart, 
We have got to find savings at the Department of Defense. Now, for Congress to do it is one thing. Um, but very honestly, nobody in Congress has the expertise to do it. Where is the expertise? It's in the Pentagon. And they know it's coming. And our men and women who are in leadership roles at the Pentagon are the brightest and best minds that America has to offer. And they're prepared to do the things necessary to provide the right kind of spending reductions to participate in getting our fiscal house back in order. So uh, all of these issues need to be on the table if we're truly going to solve this problem. And uh, at the best department, they're going to make the, the, the right kind of savings in the right areas to still allow our military operations to go uh, the way they need to go and make sure that Americans are still protected at the same time and save some money. Who's got the next question?